Hello, guys. Welcome to Talking Hawks. Uh, at the end of round four, our gather round in a scintillating match between uh, Hawks and Collingwood on a sunny day in Adelaide. We uh, had a very interesting match to uh, come to the end of the round. Um, how are you, Matt? Very good, mate. Um, geez, on the edge of my seat still, but uh, enjoyed the fight as much as it uh, wasn't quite what we hoped for. Lauren, how are you? Yeah, good. Feeling similar to Matt. It was a tough first half, but they gave a lot of fight in that second half, and I really thought we were going to get it done in the end, but just fell short. Certainly did. Uh, very, uh, very interesting match and a lot to break down. Uh, plenty of comments already streaming in. Thanks, guys. Um, but for me, first thing I've got to say, get rid of the bounce. First bounce of the match, outside the circle. Just ruins oh, yeah. the game, doesn't it? Yeah, definitely. I think that's probably not the only um, umpire criticism we'd have as a Hawks supporting unit uh, this afternoon or this evening. It's a pretty rough day out there, I think, for a few of those players and the, and the umpires, I think. But, yeah, maybe. Get rid of it. <laughs> Get rid of it, Chris yeah. saying. Thoughts, Matt? Oh, yeah, the, the uh, pump up down, uh, land down under at the start. I was ready for the game. And then, yeah, it was like, all right, let's grab it. Let's go. Yes, no, it was, um, I don't know, it was a very interesting start of the game because um, it was very lopsided, wasn't it? We sort of, um, a bit like the Geelong game, we just weren't there to, um, you know, it was just one-sided, one-sided for me. Um, and we just didn't really uh, put the brakes on just to, to control the game. Yeah, disappointing when there's – they're just a bit cleaner for mine. You know, that first half, you know, it's an arm wrestle first quarter. And second quarter would have been great if we just that little bit cleaner. They, they were giving us no time and space. We'd get possession. There were gang, you know, th two or three on us at times, and it was just – hardly a, a moment even to get a handball out so that sort of an effort you know which we brought later on in the game in the fourth quarter we've seen you know the reversal and that's when we had a, a head of steam up so um disappointing but good signs so lauren i'll throw to you um i guess the anticipated uh thing was uh finn mcginnis going to dacos which happened at the start of the game but it sort of died off yeah after. definitely Definitely. And as a um, Nick Dacos owner in Supercoach, I was expecting a down game from him. But no, he the tag wasn't on um, Dacos for the entire game. And even at the start, it was kind of more of a loose tag than it was uh, last year. So, yeah, I'm not sure what the plan was there. Maybe they didn't want to put the hard tag on just to maybe throw Collingwood off a little bit. But yeah, I thought it was interesting. And I think a lot of us are probably along the same lines of thinking that maybe McGuinness is not up to the level if he's not tagging. But I thought he did some good things today, but his, his kicking efficiency is still pretty shocking. Yeah, I was a bit of a standout. Yeah, Matt? I was yeah, shocked at uh, seeing his disposable efficiency. That left foot of his at times, I'd take my hat off to any players, you know, using it in the heat of you know, the moment. But if you haven't got it, you know, don't use it. Um, mm -hmm. I would, I'd put it away. Um, yeah. Yes. Yeah, so it's it's he faded out of the game a bit as well. So I don't know if he had a, a, a role in that third quarter that he didn't quite catch on to. But um, yeah, there you go, Sam. Spot on. Um, there was a lot of people on Dacos through the day, especially you know at the um, ball ups though. So it was interesting to see that tactic because they didn't just go the hard fin tag. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, and I. Yeah, yeah Kevin go Oh, no, you go. I was just going to say that um, the thing with Finn as well, I was kind of keeping a list of we've seen um, Frosty really improve his game by kind of putting away his kicking and maybe opting for a handball and, um, under pressure instead. And I think I was adding a few more blokes to the list of players who shouldn't be kicking under pressure tonight, and that was uh, Impey and McGuinness. Both had a, quite a few kicks that just went straight to the opposition. So maybe let's stick to handballing for a while, boys. <laughs> All right, we'll go to the crowd here. Um, bit of an obvious one tonight, but um, the Ruck matchups and uh, Meek, yeah, huge game from Meek. Uh, I'll let you go first, Matt. 
Huge game, sensational game by Meek. He uh, dominated in that first half. You know, he, they evened it up a little bit more in the second against him, but he was the, the better Ruckman dominant, you know, in the first clearances. He was getting it all done, tackling around the ball. Um, you know, he's taking marks, you know, in, in through the game as well, which we haven't always had um, in, in well, recent times uh, through the through the Ruck division. But, yeah, so it was really lovely to see just the, the effort. And uh, for mine, he was one of the best on. Go, Lofa. So, Oh, oh yeah, no, I was just going to say I definitely, definitely agree. Meek has really um, stood up when he was elevated from Box Hill level and I think, you know, it might be difficult now for Reeves to get back into the side and I think the combination of um, Meek and Ramston as well as a bit of Troll in there as well, look, they look really good, really good. Yeah, yeah. Um... I was actually surprised. I, I didn't have much t too much time to look at the stats post game, but um, Collingwood actually won the the ruck hit out. So I was quite surprised because I felt like we dominated all game. Um, but yeah, our clearance. Um, I think the biggest takeaway from uh, the clearances. I think Tagoe got off the leash a little bit too much today. I mean, yeah. I think mate. I don't know how much we focused on uh, Dacos. And I, like I said, Finn didn't go to him all game and they split it up throughout the um, centre bounce attendances. Um, virtually every midfielder had a, a little go on Dacos. But, um, yeah, Dugowie for me was the most dangerous from um, the, the throw-ups. Yeah, and I think Cameron is a pretty good tap ruckman, same as Reeves, but maybe can't do as much around the ground, whereas Meek showed a lot getting clearances, all those type of things, and taking marks as well as Rams and taking marks as well around the ground, which we haven't seen Reeves do um, in the last year or so in his that, career. That would, so, yeah. Sorry. That, they were really worried, I think, in that um, fourth quarter when um, Cox had to ruck. It was just because of the blood rule. So... It was telling. I even saw them wiping the blood off. Uh, um, sorry, what's his name? Um, the nose of what's his? Sorry, the other ruckman. I've gone blank. But it, yeah, just to try and keep him on before he got caught off. So like, it's it's formidable that he he did such a, a huge load of ruck work today, and uh, you know, almost with a few more minutes, we probably would have had it done. Yeah, another player we saw go really well today and we're getting a lot of comments about was Hardwick. Um, he moved down to the forward lines. Leo is saying here that is he a permanent forward until Lewis gets back? What are your thoughts, Matt? I can't argue it, can you? It's, uh, yeah. It is, what was it, three goals for three shots on and then he hits the post with his fourth, which had he converted that would have been a draw. Um, gives us one more for a cherry on top. So it's it's really hard to argue if we can just get the matchups right down back to cover him um and and it doesn't have to necessarily be a like for like because do we have a small court forward that can kick that many and he's just his body usage is phenomenal like as we've enjoyed it as a defender but it's just as versatile as a forward so i'm i'm stoked that they've trained him as a forward all summer and then in a game like this where there's a bit on the line uh, we needed that first win and they looked to it so it was good yeah, Chris. Yeah, no, no. I think um, the biggest takeaway is um, obviously playing down back for so long. He, he's got the ability to read the play and he acts really quickly. So being a forward, he reacts quickly and that's how he found himself in all those good positions to, um, yeah, get his shots on goal. So I'm, I'm more than happy to um, keep him down forward. Obviously, he trained there through the preseason and, um, yeah, served us well today. Um the commentators obviously mentioned uh, throughout the game his highest goal tally throughout any of his uh, career seasons was three goals. And so, yeah, today's performance was outstanding. Even for, yeah. for Mass, to, Mass was quiet at the beginning and he sort of started to come into it. But you've got someone that's a good um, you know, user by foot um, if, if you choose to play. Um, uh, you know, well, you've got a few options, but um, Seamus Mitchell as well. I think he was quite good at moments through the game as well. So you hope he's your next, I guess, Hardwick in development for mine because he seems like he's very safe set of hands and pretty smart, um, Mitchell. Yeah, definitely. I think I um, put a tweet out about that I wanted to see Hardwick move forward at halftime. And I think, well, I saw him sitting with the forward 
during that halftime break and I was very happy about that. I wasn't too um, enthused on that move in general at the start of the season, but I think in this game and with their with how our forward line was really struggling um, in the first half, I think it was a really good move to make and a really smart one and was the reason we got back into that game. And with no Lewis, Bruce, um, you know, Watson, out. Gay. Yeah, with, well, that's forward, you know, some kicking power. It's pretty phenomenal that you've got someone like Harbour you can just slot in there. Yeah, another player that's getting a bit of a run in the comments is um, is Nash. I had a bit of a knock on his game today. I thought he wasn't up to his standard of what he showed us last year and really struggled to have that game awareness. I know, you know, coming from um, Ireland, maybe it's not automatically ingrained into you, but I thought he was pretty good at that last year. So I'm not sure why that's dropped off, but I thought he, yeah, he had a pretty rough game today. What was your thoughts, Matt? Um, yeah, I, there was other things that he was bringing, you know, in terms of the contest that, yeah, the, some of the decision-making or the execution on kicks, it's a little mm. bit the Irish, you know, the Gaelic high ball. Um, yes. Yeah. He's, he's, which he's removed more of that out of his game and he's gone for the quick hands more so in recent times, which is, you know, we saw him do poll very well in the uh, best of Ferris, but it's, yeah, today looked a little bit of an off one for him for sure. But I think, you know, you, you stick with him Some comments here that, it, you know, shouldn't be playing maybe next week or whatever or career, but oh, I think that's an overreaction right now. And, we're in the <laughs> look. We just suffered a, a tough loss um, after you know a, a close finish. I think he gave us some good run in the middle. Out of the stats, I did actually cover after the game. I think he was leading our tackle count on nine. Um, but I think it wasn't. Apart from that, again, his work off the ball was really good. He got his body in the way and shepherded and created space for other players. So it's yes, yes. There's a few knocks on him, but I, I didn't think his game. Overall, was that bad today? Still six clearances, um, 11 handballs to eight kicks. So, you know, he's going to the hands more, which is good. But, you know, there's a bit of pressure on. I think hands was a better option for him most of the time today. And, yeah, stick fat, I think. Let's let's go to Marby Old Chol. Um, he's had a pretty good start to the season, I think. Um, oh, well, I'm very impressed with what he's done. Uh, how do you think he went today, Loss? Yeah, I mean... As Leo said in that comment, he started off the game pretty hot, um, missing a few of those goals, but uh, which is a little frustrating, but that will come with time. I think he puts up a good contest, is able to bring the ball to ground, as um, FTC just commented before. I think he will come good, and he's just working his way into the forward line, I think, at the moment. Um, I mean, as you said, he started well. He's been our best tall forward so far. Um so you can't have too much of a knock on him. But I think, yeah, maybe he just struggled a little bit later in the game as we, as kind of our ball movement and stuff picked up pace. I think, yeah, that that meant he was kind of struggling a little bit. And But I think he'll be okay. And I think any knocks on um, Charles' game so far this year, any early calls on how well he's going to be for Hawthorne is pretty silly at this point because he's been going well. I think he's pretty much gone from a number two forward to a number one forward in the space of yeah. a week. So, yeah, it was a bit of a step up. Um, how how do you feel about his game, Matt? Yeah, I, I liked his candy in the second quarter, even though he got tackled and then didn't. Yeah, like, kicked it. It was out of bounds, wasn't it? Um, but yes, his com uh, competitiveness in the air is good. At times, he's gone for the chest mark. He's up that high, he probably will clear uh, often. But there was one in, I think the fourth where if the arms are extended he was a good chance to get a mark and but there's some smarts to his game as well and we're seeing some of the chase as well like the smarts in the third quarter where I think it was a two on one and he's um just tapped the ball down to see Mac who then yep. went on and to Dimmer for for Dimmer's second goal so Charles yeah a, a nice option because he gives us some huge athleticism which I think we'll also see from Rama as time goes on too mm -hmm. yeah so I, I think Con has a good oh yeah yeah, let's have a chat about Ramson. Ramson's first goal, which was awesome. Um, his third game, was it? Um, but, yeah, he he, he, um, he he actually rucked decently in certain circumstances during during the game. Mm -hmm. um, 
So I think his impact wasn't too bad as a, as a second ruckman. I, I would have liked a little bit more from his forward craft, but uh, we didn't see that today. I think at, at BFL level, his forward craft has been really good, um, but it's obviously a different, totally different setup at AFL level. Yeah, but just on the back of that is what I was, um, what I've been saying for a while is that our we have pretty poor efficiency going inside fifty. So some of the time it's just not our forwards' fault. It's the fact that we are don't really have the best kickers kicking inside 50 and which is why I think we probably wanted to see Amon uh, move back to the wing. I think maybe, I'm not sure what you guys think on it, but I think a lot of us supporters that I've chatted to think that's probably the best way to go. But I think he, he had a good game today, Amon, and I think he did actually spend a little bit more time on the wing than he has um, in the first three games this year. What did you guys think about his game? I thought it was quieter in the first half. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's – there's times where I'm just hoping, like, he and, and – um, look, the, the the combination, the smarts he's got, the skills he's got, you want him to get that out outside ball and when he's got a little bit of space. Today clearly was a lot of pressure and he wasn't necessarily giving us that um, or the ball wasn't able to get to him in those sort of positions. But he worked his way into the game, I think, in the second half really nicely. So – uh, that's more of what we expect. Look, it's the reigning premier. And our first half, we scored 20 points. And in the second mm -hmm. half, we scored 52 points. So, you know, it's good when the ball's, when it's flowing our way, the, the game's going the way we want, it shows what he can do and what he can bring. So I agree, the inside 50 delivery, there was a lot that was just on the boot in that first half. It was a bit ugly. Yeah, definitely, Chris. Yeah, no, he, he did some really good things today. And uh, I think one of them was a couple of kickouts and that were really efficient in us moving the ball forward. So he does create from down back. But like you said, is he going to be more beneficial on a wing or down back? And um, as I think we've discussed previously, him and MP both playing in that back line who aren't pure defenders. Um, I think you can probably only play one of them, and I'd prefer to have Impy playing on that wing and leaving Impy sort of on that back flank or back pocket. So, um, but yeah, he, he had a good game overall. Carl, in that fourth, fourth quarter, just the presence of mind, just to uh, think, you know, kick out, fake the ruckman, go on, you know, have a bounce. That's brilliant. You love seeing that. You still want that in our game if you need. Uh, you know, the good kick out responsibilities, happy for him to float back for that for sure. Mm -hmm. um, another forward we haven't spoken much about yet who had a quiet game and was subbed off. Cody's saying he was a bit unlucky because we weren't playing that well in the first half when uh, when he was playing most of his game time. Yeah, he couldn't get involved that much, could he? But, yeah, as Cody's saying here, maybe he just missed out on a few opportunities by being subbed off before we really got our game going. Matt? Yeah, sixty percent of game time there. It was. There's times you need to go, and and I don't recall his opponent throughout the game. Um, you source efforts, but it's just that little bit more experience. I'm not, you know, I'm not saying you take him out necessarily for this week. Um, this week coming against Gold Coast, I think it is. But um, yeah, it was probably a little bit unders. You probably could have had a few names in the mix there that might have been able to be taken off for him instead of him, sorry. Chris, what, how do you say it? Yeah, I, I think he just found himself in a, in a few positions where he wasn't uh, familiar. And and again, he's coming up into a second or third forward position where he shouldn't be playing that role. Um, so, yeah, he was subbed out at three-quarter time for uh, Husswaite. Um, but, yeah, who else would you have taken off, to be honest? Um, yeah. His impact on the game wasn't huge and, like I said, wasn't necessarily his own fault. But um, I didn't necessarily think it was a bad sub. So He's um, had three kicks to answer your yeah. friend. So, no, we'll, we'll sort of, you know, he hasn't had too many games at the top level. And, again, coming up, trying to, to fill in for a Lewis missing out of the forward line is a pretty hard role to fill. Yeah. Absolutely. We've got um uh, like it's it's what we're seeing at VFL. I think you've got to reward some consistency at that VFL level. It's to your point here, Greg, throwing in O'Sullivan or Bennett, I think you want to give them a few weeks on the trot. And I do know that that's one of the things the development team 
um, that Hawthorne in the coaching fraternity and, and down at Box Hill, they pride themselves on being able to get someone up uh, into the AFL team and then play a few consecutive games. It's uh, it's a measure that they have internally. So an important one, I think, to, to give him another crack. Yeah. Unless you've got someone else to talk about, Loz, let's go to a big positive today. Yeah. Scrimshaw was huge. Give us your thoughts. Yeah, he was amazing. He took a lot of intercept marks. I thought our back line was really solid today. And I I think it's interesting how our back line was kind of the major concern coming into this season. We felt our midfield was set. We felt we'd added a few plays to our forward line that could bring an extra spark down there and that maybe our back line, especially after Blank went down, would be a, would be struggling. But a lot of those boys down there have stepped up, including um, Sam Frost, which we've talked about the last uh, the last four weeks, which we as we should have because he's been going really well. And I think Scrimshaw maybe had a little bit of a down game last week, but yeah, really showed up today. Matt Scrimmage. Scrimmage on uh, ten intercept possessions, um, ten contested possessions, three contested marks out of those two inside fifties. He did a lot, and it was. I thought it was. It had to impact a lot of his possessions, and that you can't really put a price on that when the bloke's just holding his own and, and timing when he gets involved, and then you know pretty safe. Um, I don't know what he kicked at, disposal uh, efficiency wise, but um, yeah, he's 293 meters gained, um, 22 possessions, pretty solid. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah no, he, he was all over the ground too. Like he wasn't, he was deep. He was half back, up to the wing, and and even forward at times. He covered a hell of a lot of ground, and he was just at the right spot at the right time. So many times, off, I think, throughout the game. Yeah, yeah, for us as well, we're getting lots of comments about him. As we said, we don't want to harp on it too much because we have actually talked about him so much the last few weeks. But I think, yeah, we've got to give him the recognition. Um, And as Nick has said here, he is playing his um, best football ever, in my opinion. I mean, I don't know how much I remember from him in the Melbourne days, but from Melbourne supporters' comments, I feel like it was much similar to what it has been um, maybe the last few years at Hawthorne. But, yeah, really good, really good game, and I hope he continues along down this track for the rest of the uh, rest of the year because I think he could, you know, maybe finish top 10 in the PCM if he continues like this. I think he could too, absolutely. Um, I'll let you scroll a little bit, but one, one thing that I noticed was um, Collingwood named the oldest team in the league uh, for this round and Hawthorne named the youngest team to play around four. So the most experienced, they averaged four years older than us um, and mm-hmm. 77 games more experience per player. So pretty phenomenal, not just, you know, for the song, good old Collingwood forever, but <laughs> they we, we really put up a great fight when you, you recognise that we've got the youngest list playing this this round. So, look, we're both doing it away, um, which probably leads me to Guinea, who we haven't really touched on just yeah. yet. Yeah. Can't believe what, how we haven't talked about him yet, but yeah. What did you make of the start, Loz, with uh, with Giddy? Oh yeah, I thought I thought there was about two free kicks. Then he could have could have been paid for um, in the in for his first goal, um, and he yeah, quite a few others that went begging as well later on. But I think he did what he needed to do. It was probably a very nerve wracking game for him. But he seemed to embrace the moment when he got in front of goals. And, yeah, he slotted his two shots. And I think that's all we really asked for him in this type of game, which would have, yeah, as I said, he would have felt a lot of pressure coming into today. Yeah, Braden Maynard is a high-caliber uh, defender. And, obviously, they, they paid a lot of respect to, to him, putting him on Guinea. And, um, yeah, he probably got the better of Guinea at the start. But, yeah, once Guinea got that first goal, that really sort of uh, he got a little bit more relaxed and... Um, yeah, I think his overall game was pretty good considering um, what his output has been this season. He he kept us in the game at times. So, yeah, no, I thought his performance was good. There's, there's times where it wasn't him alone, but would have just loved to see that little bit more effort. And, and I'm not sure on his pace. He's got an interesting running style. But, um, yeah, look, he's, he's 
um, awareness of the game in the moment is absolutely there. So I look forward to seeing that in years to come. And Pies faithful as we expected a boo on his, on his first up, but that, I thought that was an awesome cheer from the Hawks uh, fans at that ground. And maybe there's a few neutrals that maybe didn't like the pie so much that we're happy to get on board. So um, yeah, it was nice seeing him out there and having a, an impact. Yep, and maybe another phone call is being made to the AFL about the umpiring today. Yeah, um, maybe yeah. we'll hear about that soon. I don't know. If I was Mitchell, I'd be doing it. But anyways, we can't change that. Let's move on to something else positive <laughs> is Seamus Mitchell. I can't believe that this man hasn't been talked about as being missing from our side because, I mean, this is my fault as well, but a lot of us Hawks supporters have kind of just maybe not necessarily forgotten about him, but maybe forgotten how good he was in the few games he played um, last year or the quite a few games he played last year and how well he worked down in that back line. And I think he was a perfect player to bring in this week, which allowed us to also make that move um, for Hardwick to move down to the forward line. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, Seamus had a really good game. Chris, what was your thoughts? Yeah, no, like you said, uh, he's the, the forgotten man, really. Um, yeah, he, he he slotted in really well. Um, I just yeah, he wasn't outstanding, but he just did what he needed to do. And I guess the thing that stands out is his ball use, whether it be by hand or by foot. Um, yeah, good good return to uh, the AFL level for Seamus. And and how about uh, absolutely, Gary? It's and that's the thing we'll see from him as his confidence gets up and they, that defensive unit. And he's probably the, the one for mine when you see um, MB, I think probably the one that stays back and Carl released. You'll see him be that um, new hard work in the making. But with his confidence and they're putting the ball in his hands and him getting to the right spot, his, his pace is phenomenal. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, just to, to give us that dash out of the, the D50 will be nice. But uh, how about Hawks, uh, talking Hawks own, uh, John Newcomb? He's, uh, he's, he's arrived again. He's, welcome to 2024, Jai. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah he's, he's had a quiet start to the year, hasn't he? But, um, yeah, no, he's well and truly uh, back on track now, isn't he? he sort of, and, and probably even a quiet start to the game before he mm -hmm. got going. And, and once, he's, once he's firing, he just lifts the whole team, doesn't he? Yeah, definitely. And I think he had um, those 18 contested possessions this game. Um, someone commented that before. But, yeah, it was really, really good game. Um, I think I tweeted out at some point after he slotted his goal, oh, that's the Newcomb I remember. It was really good to see him and I see him come back into form. And hopefully, um, yeah, it stays. he stays as good as he has been this this game and has how good he was uh, last year because he's so crucial. And I think, you know, Dave's not too far away anymore. We saw um, from Timmy a few pictures of Dave doing some running um, at training this week. So, yeah, absolutely can't wait to see Day back and the combination of Day and Yukim. I think they just make each other better as well. Yeah. With, with Jai giving you... You've got Jai you're snatching that goal, you know, basically took it off her. Um, there's a few coming with players all around, just timed it, cut through, gets his goal from about 45 foot out, straight in front. But seven tackles to go with it, um, 10 clearances. I think I haven't double checked, but someone's said that, that was his um, career equal best. Um, that's a phenomenal effort. And to see him breaking some tackles, I thought Warps was looked good at the start as well. Those two for mine, you know, giving us that goal kicking mid. Um, it's it's really an ingredient we're missing. If we get that humming, um, both of those have got a brilliant fend off. Warps has been on fire and probably had a luxury of, you know, I'd say Nuke getting a bit more attention from the opposition um, to open the season. So it's great if Nuke, you know, throws it at, put the, throws the gauntlet um, to the to the competition. I reckon he can do it again um, and have a ripper season. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. I think he is going to be hopefully one of our best players in the years to come. And I think, yeah, as um, as Troy said up here, yeah, our midfield of Newcomb, Warple, Day, McKenzie is, yeah, a lot of contested base in there. And I think it'll be, um, yeah, great to see that come to fruition very soon, hopefully, with Day back. Chris and I were watching together and we, um, Chris's comment around McKenzie, just 
he doesn't really hesitate to have that shot on goal and he's because he's so balanced it it, it is beautiful to watch so it'd be nice i think wards having as many shots on goal um so that was a nice midfield whoever named that one i think Mm -hmm. yeah what about mckenzie's game here from the comment from shane um chris yeah no i've been impressed with his whole uh year um he's just gone from strength to strength he doesn't look as lost as he used to i think Initially, he was sort of taking the second or third option, whereas now I think he's he's taking that first option. Um, he looks so much more confident, as I said, uh, having those shots on goal where he'd previously probably looked to pass, which and then and then get somebody else in trouble. Whereas now it's bang on the boot, having a shot at goal. So um, he's looked really good. Um, he's, I didn't even see stats today, but it wouldn't surprise me if he had about 20 touches again. I think he's averaged pretty close to 20 all year, so it's really good for a young midfielder. And yeah. he has some nice inside 50 delivery too. Um, mm-hmm. That's something I'll look forward to. It's, uh, it was four today inside 50s, um, seven contested possessions. So he's, for mine as well, just he was a little bit uh, hesitant, maybe that slider of frame um, last year is a little bit, whether it was the role they need to play out a bit more or whether it was a little bit of self-preservation, it's got that confidence and a lot more size now, so it's nice to see him going in after it. Mm-hmm. Definitely. And I think let me just have a look. McDonald is another one. He missed that goal that would have potentially been the game winner, which was definitely unlike him. We know as FTC saying in this game, um, he, yeah, he had a very has had a very good career start for himself, but I think, yeah, it was probably a bit of a down game today. Um, and... What about that moment, though? Take take this, let, let's explore that a little because I love somebody that's going to take it on their shoulders and have a crack. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, in his makeup. It was congested, but he saw a little bit of an opening and he went for it. Chris, what? how do you see it? Yeah, no, I, I don't think he could have done much else better like besides putting it through like it wasn't that far off and yeah like you said it was pretty tight um what else was he meant to do he he he's a left on himself and, and he took the shot and it just missed unfortunately like that would have just brought the house down wouldn't it oh, is he a left foot? I think he's a right footer isn't he he's a right he could have had a left foot snap right. i reckon in the first couple of steps yeah, yeah. I mean, as you said, you want those young blokes to take the game on. That's not what I'm faulting him for in the sliders. The only thing is that I feel like C-Mac normally kicks those. That's the only thing. Yeah. But you know what? Next time he'll get them. And by next time, I think round 19 is when we play them again, sometime towards the end of the year. And I think maybe we have a better chance than we would have thought of maybe a few days ago against them in that game. And if he's um if he's more confident, you know, straight on, like you just trust the player's judgment. It's like that's what he saw, even though there was maybe two or three around him. Um, he wasn't that far off. No, exactly, very close. Um, I think we've covered mo- a lot of the players tonight. Um, Warpool is one we probably haven't gone into detail with today, but another solid performance from Warpool, and um, he's don't argues getting those clearances. What were your thoughts, Loz? Yeah, he's really doing it week in, week out so far this year. Um, I think once we can, it was kind of more of the Newcomb show towards the second half, but I think once we get them working together and firing, yeah, it'll be really beneficial for us as a team because we can see, um, we can see as in the last few weeks, um, Warps at his highest powers, the be- as the be- as good as he is is and I think we saw in the second half today Newcomb as good as he is as well so once we see those together in the game it'll be very fun to watch it didn't always come off with Bork, but in that first quarter his intent was just very clear for me like him Cicely Frosty um they were all really trying to I think lead by example and trying to impact the game so if you watch that back I think that first quarter yeah, as you said, Chris, you referred to his don't argues and taking the game on. Uh, it's for me something we were lacking, and, and at that point, Jai wasn't quite doing it as much. I think in that first quarter was where it was mm-hmm. I would dip the lid to warps, and then I think Nuke said, "I'll take it from here in the in the second onwards." So, yeah, yeah. Um, as Peter said here, I think as it's all about our efficiency inside fifty, and I think it's also all about whether we can get those centre clearances because. 
if we don't get them, we really, really struggle. And we saw that in the first half where we struggled to win centre clearances, even stoppage clearances. But in that second half, we really dominated in that area, I believe. Um, and we we saw how how impactful winning that kind of stat was on the game. So hopefully, was, yeah, go on, Matt. Yeah, in, in almost the end of the second quarter, our, it was 58 to 20 at the time, their inside efficiency Oh, sorry, efficiency inside 50 was 50%, ours was 29%. You know, so mm-hmm. I don't know where it ended up at the end of the game, but it was just, for me, that was a glaring stat as well. And it's going to come. It's going to come. Yeah, definitely. That for, that first half can't be probably understated, um, that it was pretty shocking. And even in that second quarter especially, it really looked like a training drill there for Collingwood, but absolute props to them. Um, to fight back and get back into the contest and basically, Nelly, get as close as you can to winning it without um, getting those four points. But I wonder, that has been the biggest problem with our side for the past few years is that we do look so good at times, but it just is not happening over four quarters. Yeah, like you said, it, it, Collingwood just seemed to walk the ball out at times and they've got two, three options, and they're just hand passing without pressure, and and getting the ball out easy. Um, so, and, and that's what happened against Geelong as well. And as soon as we took the game on, uh, we got results. We were hitting the scoreboard. So, I wish we'd played a bit more aggressively against Geelong, like we did today against Collingwood. But anyway, um, but another one which has been a, a little bit lacking this season, uh, Sicily. Probably his best game of the season for mine. Um, did some good things today. And, again, not necessarily uh, himself. Sometimes blocking for his other defenders to take marks. And, yeah, he's one percenters. Yeah, definitely. I've been missing Sicily. I know it's tough down there because he kind of can't really get the role he wants to without really having blank in the side. But I think he this was kind of the perfect matchup for him with them not having too many tall forwards. So he could play that, um, play loose down back. And we saw how good he can play when he, yeah, has that time and space. And I wonder if someone like an Ethan Phillips potentially gets bought in um, in a couple of weeks if we need to play on a team, you know, like, like a Carlton that has two really huge forwards so that we don't need to force um, Sicily to match up against one of the, the opposition's best forwards. I liked that they even just threw, the, threw it out there right at the end of the game. The last roll of the dice, they put Sicily forward and he impacted that contest as well. I think it was a tackle. Um, and if it spilled out there, we were a chance just to sort of get that fast break goal. It's it's all you can ask for. I think the players look spent on both sides. Um, I think it was pretty pretty competitive. And, um, yeah, Sis, I think he was, you know, very, very composed after probably, you know, the first game of the season and, you know, the, the free kick there and whatnot. It's um, it's good. Teams are still going to keep targeting him and they were really uh, in his grill today a lot. So he did very, very well to um, lead by example, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that is a very good point. Uh, when we do have momentum of the game, we're not really holding it for long enough. I think there was a good stretch there in the second quarter for 10, 15 minutes where we, we controlled the game. And obviously that basically the whole of that last quarter, we controlled the game. They had them, We had them on the back foot. So we just need to try and do that more often. And obviously we're going to get better results. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, that's for sure. it's, it's- Somebody else said earlier, you know, it's more shots on goal. and more, Really, that's what you want. You're not going to win a game kicking, uh, you know, in the first half, three goals, two, um, five scoring shots, score 40 for the game. You, you've got to really, you know, and we brought it. We showed what we can do. So it's it's there. It's I'm, I'm feeling that next win not far away. It could be Gold Coast. You never know. Yeah, we've got North Melbourne um, after Gold Coast next week, which I really hope we should get done. Um, but it is at Marvel where maybe we don't play as well as we would say at Utah's or the MCG. But yeah, it would be would love to get. I feel our next our first win is coming very soon. Absolutely. Um, I know we briefly touched on Hardwick, but come on, we're going to give him a bit more of a pump up. 
he, the impact he on the he, he changed the game, didn't he? he oh yeah, absolutely changed the game. Yeah, um, just that. Did you say I, I actually walked out of the room at the time, Matt? He hit the post, did he, or just missed the goal? Was it? Sorry, is that Hardwick? Yes, Hardwick's. Yeah, he'd kick three straight and that fourth shot. Oh yeah, the fourth shot. It was uh, going from the left to the right, and it only just hit the the post. It was, um, mm -hmm. I think, it might have bounced back in in bounds, so it wasn't quite on the inside of the post. But mate, dead eye dick, it was uh, no complaints with four goals won. So he had a phenomenal game, and he got that massive corky. Um, and yeah, he looked true. very sore. And like all good forwards, when the ball came to his hands, the next kick, he was uh, it was right as rain, and he just got on with it. So uh, it's what we like to see. He's tough. Yeah, definitely. Joshua has got the right idea here that he was the game changer today. I think um, a lot of people, likewise to myself, are thinking, hey, maybe we could have won that game if maybe one of these guys had have been playing. But, you know, it's all the ifs and buts um, about that. We don't we don't know. But I think, yeah, we've got we've got a fair few injuries, which is pretty easy to forget sometimes when you get so close to a win. But yeah, we've got a lot of talent to come back into this side. How many of the Hawks players have kicked three goals in a quarter this year? Um, you know. None. Yeah. It's, well, it's no, not only, yeah. <laughs> it says a lot. Enough. <laughs> so, like, it's it's knowing how to use what you've got and, and different games, you know, different opponents are going to allow. I can see... It's just the multi-dimensional aspects of certain players and how we're developing them to be able to throw people to different ends as a little bit of Clarko in what you know you see Sam doing here and having blokes he can move around the ground and just cause match up chaos for the opposition. So I, I love it. It's um yeah, Dim is still young enough to to give us a lot of goals if uh, that's where we keep playing him. Mm -hmm. so, so Finn was dropped uh, previously and come brought back into the side to basically tag on um, Dacos. Well, what are your thoughts on uh, him holding his spot on the side next week against Gold Coast? Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think probably. Um, probably he doesn't. I wouldn't think, but I don't know. Do we have? I don't believe we've got anyone coming back. From injury, just correct me if I'm wrong. There, we've got um, some uh, conflicting uh, opinions here. Yeah, I mean, I think he did better than he has done for a while without really playing that really hard tagging role. But as you said, as I said previously at the start of the live stream, I think his kicking is just pretty poor, and I don't know. We haven't really seen an improvement of that. Like even at VFL level, he's not one of the best kicks, but Maybe he gets another go. Um, yeah, not sure. We've got Husway maybe potentially getting a full game instead of him. Would we see that instead? I think probably know that maybe McGuinness isn't a sub option after that game a couple of weeks ago. But I think hmm, that's definitely an interesting question. In my personal opinion, probably should be dropped, but I don't necessarily know who comes in because – while I think Husweight will be very good, he maybe hasn't showed it as much at AFL level as he's done at BFL level. I think Finn's role, like I think to half time, I think he had 18 possessions. Um, mm -hmm. so whilst the disposal not always there, he's getting the ball. I think his role changed after half time. And look, we, we I didn't see him as much. And I didn't take notice. You know, not being at the ground doesn't help to always observe those sorts of things. So anybody that was at the ground tell us what he was doing. But it's um I think inside the four walls, knowing the role that he was given quarter by quarter is really only the true, you know, answer that we're going to get here. I, if he's in, I'm, I wouldn't be surprised and mm -hmm. you keep back in it because he can play, you know, he's, he's probably learning to play more roles and apply himself in different ways. So, yeah, it's, I, I was sad Huss rate didn't get a chance till earlier and I love it. As soon as he's on, I think it looked like he went straight to the centre bounce. Um it's good. He's he's clean with his hands. I'd say he's going to get a chance again next week. I don't think he lowered his colours at all. Huh? So, um, yeah, it's he's a match-up problem when we've got a good ruckman like Meg, well, who's, who's getting the ball down. Mm -hmm. He'll be damaging um, in that midfield. So look forward to seeing some more of that. 
Um, we've just got Wayne here saying that Raoul or Anderson need to be curtailed, which I think is actually a very good shout. And I think if McGuinness does get a game uh, next week, he will definitely be going to one of those two boys. And I know, yep. I understand Cody's um, frustration here. I know how terrible <laughs> just mm-hmm. a few games off father's son still hurts every game he plays, but maybe we get him on um, on the trade table soon. Who knows? So there we go. Barry Jolly's saying, uh, yeah, Finn, um, I think it's ragged, Hill. So you might have gone to Hill for a little bit there, or tagged would have been, not ragged. There we go. Yes. I was thinking ragged. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so it's interesting. How about Mass? Um, Massimo D'Ambrosio. Yeah. Yeah, he had a... Um, Decent game today. He played his role. Maybe wanted to see him get involved a bit more. Um, I feel like we didn't get to see him kick many inside 50, if not at all, which I think is a really crucial part of his game that we would want to see used, especially when we had such um, poor entries inside 50 towards the start of the game. But, yeah, I wasn't too upset or too pleased about Massimo's game. What were you thinking, Chris? Yeah, no, I felt his impact in the first half was minimal um, and I don't know if maybe they'd, because um, he'd been so impactful in the in the first few rounds, whether they'd put a bit more attention towards him. Um, mm-hmm. But, yeah, he, he did find his way into the game throughout the second half and, yeah, like you said, that you, you want him kicking that ball inside 50 and I don't know that we've seen it too often today. Mm-hmm. And uh, I don't think we have quite touched on, I'm not sure how, Dylan Moore. Oh, yeah. Wow's up. Nice. Sorry, Maury. We shouldn't have left you off this long. <laughs> he, yep. Go on, Maury. Yeah, no, absolutely brilliant game from Moore. Really worked his way into it. Finished off with the three goals, I believe. Did really well, really well in that second half to really get us back into it. That mark, hey, how good was that? As the commentator said, I didn't know he had that in him, but he obviously does. And yeah, he looked great, and he, I know he really wanted to win this game. We saw how influential he was in the game against Collingwood last year as well. Um, but, yeah, really good. And I feel like maybe he's had a little bit of a down start to the year as well, so it was really good seeing him get maybe a bit of confidence back. Do you do you think um, Dylan Moore, is he one of our uh, barometers? He, he's a heart and soul player. Do you think when he's up and about, that's when the Hawks are going well. Mm. Or who else is there if it's if it's not Dylan Moore? Who else are the barometers? Go, Chris. And fans. No, so, so I just uh, I had a little um, dig on Maury a couple of times today where he was the guy who was meant to fly for the ball. And although he's coming from the front of the contest, he, he hesitated and didn't go. Um, so that was sort of disappointing me a little bit. But, um, yeah. Now, again, he was a little bit quiet but found his way into the game at important times and obviously kicked those three goals. So it's super important. And he yeah, absolutely is a, one of, if not the biggest barometer uh, for us. Um, probably the barometers, I would have said Jai previously last year. When Jai's on fire, we're on fire. And mm-hmm. we probably haven't seen that in the first few rounds. And today, like, yeah, he ignited us again. So... Have you got any, anybody else to add, Loss? Oh, no, I think actually I haven't really thought about it like that. But, yeah, in a sense, Moore is definitely a barometer. When he's popping up and kicking a few goals, I think it means we, we've had a pretty good game. Um, but, yeah, Newcomb, definitely another one. Um, C-Mac is yep. another one that I think could definitely be a barometer for us. If he's kicking a few goals, we're going well. Um, yeah, so there's a few players. Sicily uh, yeah. definitely is is up there. Yeah, Mitch Lewis, no doubt. Um, yeah, the is. only thing is I think maybe Sicily can have a really good game and us still maybe get smashed a bit. But someone like a Dylan Moore, maybe we if he's quiet, we're also quiet. Yeah, I like that, Jasper Rudy. Thank oh, you. Oh, yeah. Definitely had that one, and he's had a very good year. I think Scrimshaw, a very underrated player, and, yes, definitely um, definitely keeps our back line afloat, doesn't he? Mm-hmm. Yeah, 100%. And that, well, that's what a, a big part of what lets Sis do what he can do best because Scrim is so trustworthy, whether it's small or, or tall. Um, but to, to go back to your point on Maury, Chris, 
I think sometimes that might have just been a communication piece with whoever he was, you know, going, you know, when he's sitting there for the crumb. A misjudgment maybe, a, a miscommunication here and there. Um, for mine, very, very quickly forgiven because he uh, is he goes at it hard, whatever mm -hmm. he does. And yeah. Sorry, just to, just to finish off on those barometers, I think C-Mac, for such a young player, when he's on top of his game, I think we are as well. So I'm not necessarily the barometer, but I feel like he plays better when we're playing better, whether mm -hmm. that's whether he's lifting our team or he just plays better when we're playing better. But, uh, yeah, he seems to um, play his best when we're playing best. Well, and I have a sneaky feeling I think Guinea might be a bit of a barometer for us in, yeah. uh, in, in the future. So let's see how we go. Um, um, what, what question I've got? Dave, oh, yeah. Oh, you go. Let's go. Well, yeah, let's just got from David. Another player we haven't really spoken about yet is Ward. I think we probably wanted to see him more um, playing that inside mid role today. I think he probably played more of that than he has all year, as com maybe compared to the wing. I think he did some good things in there, maybe um, just a little indecisive, maybe with the ball is the right word, um, because I know he's got the footy IQ, just maybe yeah, doesn't exactly know which option to take. But I thought he had a good game today and probably his best of the year. But, yeah, liked seeing him playing as a midfielder rather um, rather than being on that wing because sometimes when he's on that wing he gets caught down in the back line and I don't think that's maybe where his game really shines. No, I agree with you there, Loz. Um, I definitely think he had his best game of the year because I was probably thought he was potentially lucky to get a start at the, at the start of the season when Husswaite and um, Cam McKenzie were probably all fighting for that that one spot. And, um, yeah, oh, his output wasn't great. He was sort of a bit lost. I felt like he wasn't played in the right position. But he, each game this year he's improved and improved. And today I, I felt like he actually, yeah, was impactful in what he did. Mm -hmm. How do you feel, Matt? Yeah, I just would have liked to see. I, I maybe it's my belief in him. I, I think he's just capable of giving us more, and it's at times, it's it's in the right area where he's kicking it. I, I it looks like he's got the strength through his hips to shake off a few more tackles here and there. But again, I think it might have been the role that he was being asked to be playing today, just to move it forward and get meters. I don't know how many meters he he was on for for the day, but uh, yeah, look, it's. He's doing a lot of the right things. You know, three three forty six. So he's our fifth, sixth, uh, fifth highest uh, meters gain. So it's, but it was tight in the contest as well. So I think maybe that's just a little bit of composure as well. With that'll keep coming with time. But I agree, Loz. He's very great IQ. Um, you know, hundred percent committed, and and mm -hmm. yeah, we'll see a lot more from from Morty. Um, so I, I like that they're giving him a go, and you know, he comes with that today. I'm interested to know, though, from the fans, who, who's travelled to South Australia from interstate because they seem like a good Hawthorne supporter base there today and clearly it was a, a carnival of sorts and I think the, the Oval looked like it held up well, but, um, mm -hmm. yeah, there was a good and a loud voice there um, coming through the TV. I didn't get to go myself, but, um, yeah, sing out if you were on the line and you travelled interstate to, to go and see the Hawks. Yeah, definitely. I wish I was there, that's for sure. I mean, I wanted to go, I was said to myself at the end of last year, oh, I really want to try and get there next year and couldn't make it work. But, yeah, trying to commit to myself that I will try and get myself there next year because it looks, yeah, looks like the best time ever. Yeah, if you're a footy nuffy, absolutely brilliant. <laughs> um, it's, as you are, Loz, um, say that with the greatest yes. of respect. It's, yeah. <laughs> um, I'll let the fans keep ticking away there. But also, after the games in the rooms, but Sam walking down, he looked uh, annoyed. He was you know, mm. frustrated in, in that fourth quarter, maybe at different times. Um, I think in the room, it was great in, in, in the best possible way to see that the players were were disappointed. Um, those The looks on their face said it all to me. So they really, really wanted that. And they really believed. And... Um, are all, you know, quite a few of them slumping in their chair a bit, which for me, you know, and we pipped them last year, to go again against the Premiers with the youngest or the most inexperienced list named, um, I think it's a phenomenal effort. But what did anyone else observe, I guess, about Sam and, and maybe the players? 
Oh, look, I, to be honest, I didn't give us much of a chance, especially with our outs this week. And, um, yeah, at halftime, even more so thinking, yeah, we've got no chance. The, the fact that we we rallied, um, gave our all, and it, I guess it's easy when you've got no pressure and you're coming from behind because you're just going to, you're just going to give it all you've got and blast away. So I think they obviously got the license to take the risky kicks and take the game on. And yeah, it, it showed. So yeah. look, overall happy with the res- like with the effort. I guess the results disappointing because we didn't quite get over the line. Even though, like we said, C Mac had that chance for that shot. There were, and you can't put it down to that one shot. There were more opportunities than that. But yeah, it, it's frustrating that we couldn't quite get over the line today. Yeah, yeah. I think I saw um, that. I really liked what Amon did in that last quarter with a couple of minutes to go when we really needed to score, and he had the leadership and the knowledge and the game sense to understand that you can't just chip kick it around to try and get that score in such a short amount of time. He went straight down the line, straight down the middle, and that resulted in, um, was it the Dylan Moore goal, I believe? One of our goals in that last quarter, but it, that put us re- um, just in, actually really in the game, like only about a handful of points down, which I thought was really good, good game awareness from Amon to know what to do there. And I think maybe... As Daz and I have said maybe over the past few weeks that we have been kind of lacking that um, leadership ability on field, maybe in the sense of letting teams kick a few goals on us or really big swings in momentum, whereas I think we showed today that we've got those leaders there and I think Hardwick is definitely one of them and one going down to that forward line and I think, you know, missing Bruce and missing Mitch Lewis who who have been out, who are our leading games players down in that forward line was um yeah it was a struggle in the leadership area but I think going letting um Hardwick go down there really kind of brought them all into line mm. yeah leaderships we're seeing it in different lines now you know make today was a really big leader for us I walked in the first quarter you know through the rest of the game Carl Amon I just had to hit refresh because his meters gained for the game was 897. wow that's wow. unbelievable and the next closest was Sicily on 438. I don't think you see it up in the 800s very much at all. No. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's yeah, a nice uh, observation, Loz, just to talk about the leaders there um, and what we're seeing coming. Yep, there we go. A lot of support for you. Awesome. Hey, yeah. if, uh, if you – we've got a great – a um, lot of comments and thanks for, for joining us. We will probably wrap it up shortly, but I think just the overall support for Talking Hawks has been amazing. Um, we do sponsor a number of players at the Hawks. We have our little merch and whatnot. So um, if you'd like to join us, we would love to get some more help and have the money going to the club to, to sponsor Jai Newcomb and Denver Granger Barras and, and Jazz Fleming as the season kicks on uh, for the women's later on. Uh, it's on the Talking Hawks website. You can check out the details there. There's some nice little perks and uh, experiences we give you, uh, the, the small group that joins us each year. And for those that have already um, jumped in, thank you very much. Uh, we've contributed close to 13, 14 grand uh, uh, over the past few years with the help of you. So um, promo over. Um, Chris, what are you saying there, mate, on the comments? Yeah, no, we're pretty much wrapping it up, I think, unless there's some uh, killer questions right at the end. Um, yeah. Are we looking for next week? I think, uh, like- yeah, Gun- uh, Josh, you are, has a good question. Will Gunston return next week? We know he's fit because he did play for Box Hill last week, so fitness isn't the issue. He maybe didn't have as dominant game as you would have expected in the VFL last week. So, yeah, maybe he doesn't get bought in next week, which much – to my sadness, because I'd love to see Gunson play as many games at the top level, but maybe it is for the best. But I think with Lewis out, you know, um, maybe we should bring him in. I don't know. I'm flip-flopping back and forth because my allegiance is so strong with um, Gunners. But you know what? I will guess I'll leave that uh, difficult decision up to Sammy. All I'll yeah. say is um, don't want him to be the sub. Um, I'm happy if he's subbed yeah. out. So, like, let him play three quarters of the game and, and if he's, you know, getting a bit tired. But, yeah, I, I think he's too valuable. Um, he's too smart. So if he's given the opportunity, he's going to 
be too um, too important for us not to play. So, in my opinion, so play yeah. play Winston, please. There's a couple of May... good comments. Yeah, I go on, Lars. Yeah, no, I was just going to say. Um, Ramston, maybe one we haven't touched on as much as we um, have some of the other guys, but I thought he was had a very respectable game, maybe faded out towards the end, which you can expect from, you know, only playing a couple of games. But do we do we think he gets a run next week? Well, coming up against Jared Witts um, is a pretty tall ask. I guess you probably mm-hmm. put him up in the uh, top five ruckman in the comp. So big, big body. Um, it's a big ask for Ramo. I guess he's probably more playing against that second Ruckman or the the, the forward subbing as the Ruckman. Um, but I thought he was good today, and I think he's more than likely going to play. Uh, Ned Reeves, yeah. I guess, with that height is a chance to return, but I'm thinking Ramo, it'd be nice to see him get a few games together. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, it ties in nicely here, James's comment, um, if I can get that one up. 11 players under 21. Oh, sorry, 11 players under 21 years of age played today. Um, it's I think that's a sign we're going to see more of uh, Rama. And and for mine, we might see some players that get a, an opportunity for an extra week or two. But maybe on field, you're not seeing it and, and thinking, do they deserve that? I think it's, just, it's a confidence thing. It's such a fine line when you've got healthy, you know, a deeper list, which we're, we're building out. Um, but for mine, this was one last one. I thought Stephen cracking comment here. He definitely stood up, MP. Yeah. Uh, we do have, um, yeah, a lot of love for MP. I think he's he's won his way into our, our hearts as Hawks fans. And uh, after the knee, Rico, for it to see him up and going again, um, it, it's great. And now he's bringing a lot more leadership, I think, as well. So. Yeah, he, can get, yeah. he can be a bit maligned at time, but I guess some of his kicks, uh, or I, th- I, th- I think it's because he takes the game on and takes some risky kicks. Some of them don't pay off, and then you know he gets a, a bad image for it. But he creates so much for us, um, and yeah, can't doubt his effort. Um, yeah, he was really good today, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, I, th- I thought the last quarter was really good. Um, I think, yeah, maybe as I said at the start of the. Um, the live stream that I'm not a big fan when he's maybe kicking the ball, but I think in the last quarter when he was handballing it around and really moving the ball forward was when we saw the best of MP. Yeah, 100%. Well, um, if you're not following us on our socials, get involved there. Uh, follow us on YouTube, Insta, Facebook, X, Twitter. Thanks for joining us all tonight. Um Chris, any last thoughts from from you, mate? No, no, I appreciate all the guys. The, the, the numbers have gone up all throughout uh, the stream tonight, so I appreciate all your comments and your support. So, yes, like I said, just uh, keep following Talking Hawks. Give us a like and and follow if you're not already following us. Uh, Loz, anything mm-hmm. else? Yeah, no, just wanted to say to everyone watching, amazing, lots of amazing comments coming through. So sorry we didn't, we didn't get to every single one, but... Um, hopefully we kind of covered everything uh, we wanted to, you Hawk supporters w- wanted to hear from us. Um, if you left a few comments that didn't get um, touched on, maybe we might have already touched on it earlier in the stream. So go back and watch the replay after we're done here to maybe catch up on anything that you missed. But, yeah, wonderful, wonderful stream today. Thanks, everyone, Hawk supporters, for showing up for us. Hopefully we get the, uh, the win very soon, very soon. It's nice to do it uh, together, even after a close, close loss. Um, joining you all. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I've been away, so uh, the team's done a cracking job while I've uh, I've been away. So awesome! All right, well, uh, I'll kick off this outro, Chris. O. Go for it. All right, go the Hawks. Cheers, guys. Go Hawks.